Good morning and Happy New Year. It's Tuesday, January 3rd, and this is World Watch. The United States aims to give advanced weaponry to Ukraine to help them defend against the ongoing barrage of Russian aerial attacks in the plans Joint Direct Attack Munition Kits, otherwise known as smart bombs. These make unguided aerial weapons more precise by incorporating global positioning devices. The JDAMs can be bolted to a variety of weapons and aircraft. Also in the pipeline from the Pentagon, a Patriot missile battery. It's the most advanced surface-to-air missile system the U.S. has in its arsenal. The Patriot relies on a sophisticated radar system to detect threats and launch missiles to intercept them. It's mobile, mounted to the back of a truck. It has up to eight launchers, each capable of firing between four and 16 rounds of missiles, depending on munition size. Some concerns, though, like manpower and training. Three men are needed to fire the thing, but about 90 soldiers are required to operate and maintain it. Its cost effectiveness against Russia's cheaper Iranian made weaponry is also a question. Not to mention potential misfires could land in Russia and escalate the conflict. But it's already being seen as an escalation. In December, the Kremlin said the Patriot systems would be a legitimate target for Russian strikes against Ukraine. The government has released a trove of documents on the assassination of former President John F. Kennedy. A gunman shot JFK in Dallas on November 22, 1963. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. It became one of the most scrutinized moments in presidential history and spawned dozens of conspiracy theories. Last week, the National Archives released 13,000 government records about the assassination. The documents have been kept secret or redacted in case they contain sensitive information. It's not the first batch of JFK assassination records the government has released. Documents revealed in 2017 showed how the CIA raided trash cans in the Cuban embassy in Mexico City and they included transcripts of an interview with a Russian defector. Newly released records often vary in significance. Sometimes the new batches include details already released before, but now with one less redaction. This new batch of documents likely doesn't include any bombshell revelations, but historians still hope it will shed light on the events leading up to the assassination. Venice, Italy continues its battle against the ocean. St. Mark's Basilica, adding glass panels to preserve its historic features. The city is famously built on a lagoon. At high tides, the ocean regularly inundates its historic square, where the 900-year-old basilica sits at the lowest point in the city, two feet below sea level. Seawater leaves behind salt that corrodes its elaborate marble columns and floor mosaics. Mario Piana is in charge of maintaining and protecting the 900-year-old structure. He says the new panels can hold back three and a half feet of water. The glass is capable of resisting strong pressure. The barriers have a base in armored concrete that goes below the pavement. The glass is part of a larger engineering plan to make channels below St. Mark's Square to divert water. A long time of scraping, dusting, and digging to uncover one long neck from a long time ago. This Elasmosaurus was uncovered in Queensland, Australia. And get this, it's a complete skeleton. That's rare because Elasmosauruses have the second longest neck of any animal ever. And in skeletons and fossils, that long neck breaks apart from the head. Paleontologists usually find either a head or parts of a body, but rarely both intact. The fact that this guy had both allows us to close that gap where they have this overlap between the body and the head that will unravel a lot of the species diversity. These marine reptiles are thought to have dove and swam underwater to feed on small fish. So finding one in Australia's desert outback presents some interesting questions for paleontologists. And in other parts of Australia, there's another ancient species, but it's much scarier than a skeleton. More on that after the break. Parents want to know, what kind of influence will college friends have on my student? Watch the answer now at boyscollege.com slash parents. Australia is known for dangerous animals, from giant spiders to snakes. 
and crocodiles. Now, a survey of the East Kimberley region shows a sharp rise in the deadly predators. This is the Lower Ord River, Australia's largest saltwater crocodile habitat. Tons of people come here every year to fish and swim, but it's getting downright dangerous. Watch out for crocs, we gotta you know, be alert every time. People are putting their own lives at risk, and they're people with families and loved ones. This creature is hiding just a few hundred meters from Ivanhoe Crossing, a popular leisure spot. Crocodile numbers in the river have doubled in the last five years, now more than 2,000. Ben Corey studies their population growth. As we see crocodile numbers recover from you know, near extinction, they'll sort of reach, they'll, the, the numbers will sort of stabilize and we'll start to see more and more bigger animals in the population. Saltwater crocodiles almost went extinct back in the 1970s, mostly due to hunting before the government protected them. That's mostly thanks to rangers who go around checking traps for crocodiles. We only like caught one for three years ago. It was about one meter ten, I think. Yeah, little feisty little fellow. Deaths from croc attacks in this area are still relatively rare. It's a new year, and who knows what new technology this year could bring. But Hannah, we do have some intriguing possibilities. Part of the process of inventing new tech involves creating a prototype, a model to test it out. By looking at prototypes, we can get an idea of what new technology is coming down the pipeline. An organization in Dubai called Prototypes for Humanity is showcasing a hundred ideas that have the potential to change the way we live. All of the prototypes were designed by students who saw problems in their communities or globally and used the intelligent minds God gave them to come up with innovative solutions. What is great about Prototypes for Humanity is our ability to showcase high-tech next to low-tech solutions, things addressing global large-scale problems alongside localized issues. We don't have time to look at all 100 of them, but we'll highlight a few. Take a look at this orthotic brace that uses sensors to adjust its shape to the individual patient. Orthotics can be uncomfortable and often require multiple visits to the doctor for adjustment, but this one can do that on its own. This is a chair, but wait, a chair that can turn into a raft, complete with a paddle. It's designed for people who live in floodplains. An emergency pop-up raft in case of flash flooding. And yep, it can support the weight of an adult and keep them afloat. This floating barrier traps plastic waste and prevents it from going in the ocean. Here's a pregnancy test, specifically made for the visually impaired. Typical tests show lines or plus and minus signs, but this one buzzes once for negative and twice for positive. This handy tool helps people with arthritis. It conveniently snaps onto a railing and provides support for walking upstairs. Check out the design for this self-sustained vending machine. It collects rainwater, mixes it with any leftover wasted food, and composts it. All of these prototypes have the potential to improve life, some in small, everyday ways, and others on a more global scale. Keep an eye out in the coming year to see if any of them make their mark on the world. And now, chew on these questions. Actually, a crocodile can chew. It swallows <laughs> quiz coins whole. But it does have the strongest bite. How many pounds of pressure? It has about 60 teeth and it replaces the ones it loses. How many can a croc go through in a year? It can hold its breath for an hour by slowing its heart rate to this many beats per minute. Why does a croc rest with its mouth open wide? To stay cool? To warn away enemies? To allow birds to pick its teeth clean? It can run as fast as a black rat snake, a road runner, a rabbit. And thanks for watching, everybody. I'm the Big Bash. Remember, whatever you